Hi, I'm Mark Edwards. Welcome to Travelog and welcome to Shenzhen. We've woken up a tiny bit earlier so that we could hike to Lotus Mountain, which is where we are right now, or Lotus Hill, as it's also commonly known. If you can get here slightly earlier in the morning, it'll be a bit cooler so you don't have to sweat too much. It's right in the city and there are a couple of these sorts of hills scattered around. Now, as you can see, we've got a fantastic view all over Shenzhen City. And in the next half an hour, hopefully we're going to take you right into there and all around. So enjoy. Just down the road near the Lotus Hill, there's a new area bustling with shops, office blocks and government buildings. We've managed to get the theme parks and shopping out of the way in the last episode, so let's feed the culture vulture. So when you come to Shenzhen, it's not all going to be about shopping, you can get a bit of culture in as well. We've made our way to the Shenzhen Museum, which is open every day except Monday from 10am to 6pm and rather surprisingly, but rather awesomely, is completely free. Let's go in with the kids. The best way to learn about China's 30 years of reform and opening up is to visit the new Shenzhen Museum, which opened in 2008. You'll find it on Fuzhong Road at the heart of Shenzhen's brand new Futian Central Business District and Cultural Center. Besides hosting touring exhibitions, the 32,000 square meter museum holds permanent exhibitions about the history of Shenzhen and its people. And you won't get lost in translation. The museum has two English speaking guides and audiobooks in English, French, Japanese, and Korean. So, despite having a huge immigrant population in Shenzhen, they're still very, very proud of their Canton background and their Canton culture, which is highlighted in the first part of this area at the Shenzhen Museum. And then if you keep moving, just walking around, strolling, what you'll find is things to do with the hacker culture, which is also predominant here in Shenzhen. In Germany, do they, do, because I find it very strange, they, you don't have to pay to get into this museum, yet it's, I would have expected it to be almost like derelict kind of museum, but it's very nice and it shows a lot of culture. Is that, is that the same in Germany? Do you, most of the museums free or...? No, in Germany it's a different way, you have to pay when you You go. have to pay, most most of the, yeah, the museums. it's the same in the UK and in France and everything, that's why I'm a bit surprised when I came here. Coming to the Shenzhen Museum really gives you a chance to learn all about the culture of the people in the old days who came here long before the city was made. So for those of you whose Chinese is a little bit rusty at the moment, don't worry. They have fully interactive guides in English situated all over the place, as well as human guides who speak English. Now hopefully you've enjoyed your trip around with the cultural relics, the Shenzhen traditional folk customs and all those things. It's a three-story building and don't forget, it's all totally free. As a migrant city, Shenzhen represents all regional cuisines of China. However, the one thing they all have in common, even if the food isn't the same, is the pre-meal cleaning process. <laughs> so what you'll find in many of the restaurants in China is that they've got, they've been disinfected, all of the pans and pots and pans and your plates and everything have been disinfected already, but in Guangdong they go one step further in terms of keeping things clean, all your cutlery and everything else clean, pour yourself a cup of tea, don't drink it, here clean up all of your stuff, here we go, okay, spoon, chopsticks, and then discard, and then you can drink. So, fully satisfied and a bit sleepy. For lunch today, we tried out some typically Chinese food from Foshan. Very light and doesn't use too many spices. Most of the dishes retail around 20 to 30 RMB and I'll tell you what, I'm just going to descend into a little food coma now. Like that? The Crane Lake Villa is one of the biggest hacker residences in the city. Surrounded by modern buildings, the ancient residence, now a hacker folk culture museum, is strikingly grand. 
Its wall required almost 5,000 cubic meters of mud, sand, and stone to finish. And it's open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. So the Crane Lake Villa was built almost 200 years ago during the reign of Emperor Chen Long in the Qing Dynasty. And it's one of the largest walled complexes, hacker style, in the whole of China. Now for all you architectural buffs out there, it's a perfect chance to see what traditional hacker architecture looks like. So the Crane Lake Villa used to be a huge residential complex and has now been changed into a traditional hacker museum. Tickets are 10 kwai or 5 kwai if you've got your student card on you, so don't forget that. We're on our way. It's about 30 kilometers north of Shenzhen city center, but we're on our way to Dafeng, which is an oil painting village. See you there. Although previously unknown, over the last 20 years, Dafeng Village has emerged as the world's largest mass producer of oil paintings. These days, around 8,000 artists churn out some 5 million paintings a year, bringing international fame and acclaim to the village. The story goes that Huang Jiang, a businessman and painter from Hong Kong, came to Dafeng with around 20 painters and apprentices, drawn quite simply by its low housing prices. And from there, it just grew. Fair play, at least the guy's honest. It seems to be all about the money, <laughs> as long as there's cash behind it. Shaba, you think the dog will show you? <laughs> he understood what I meant. <laughs> so two or three days for a single person and up to five or six days for three people. If you fancy having a nice little photo of yourself portrayed in a painting, come along here, come to this part of town. We'll try and come down here on a slightly nicer day and meander around the narrow, shady lanes whilst you take in the scent of painting oils which permeate the air and are soothed by the soft classical music which drift out from the storefront. You'll find artists tucked into small nooks and crannies throughout the village painting everything from abstract to art deco, folk to futurism and realism to romanticism. So from the copies of photographs and portraits on the outside, we've also got originals here in many of the galleries that they have situated, where you've got shops and galleries intertwined all around Da Fun. So come have a wander around, check out some art. The locals say that during peak times, there can be as many as 10,000 painters in the village. And many of the shops and stalls are open 24 hours. You're totally spoilt for choice. If you get a little bit tired of haggling outside, you can take in the atmosphere in the gallery and enjoy a nice cup of tea surrounded by all this creativity. So we're heading to the Guanlan Original Printmaking Village. It's situated an hour north of Shenzhen city centre. Hi, ni hao. Morning. <laughs> Having got a taste of the painting scene, broaden your artistic horizons and head over to another tranquil village called the Guanlan Print Base. Here you'll find an artistic and creative hub. Previously workshops for factories, more than a thousand square meters of old buildings have been transformed into studios for print artists. Home for centuries to the hard-working hacker people, the village consists of typical hacker buildings with grand watchtowers shrouded by lively tropical plants. The first China Guanlan International Print Biennial 
was held here in 2007, and more than a thousand artists from 57 nations submitted almost 2,000 works of art. How did you end up coming here to, to Shenzhen? Well, they invited me. I had been in there. They have uh, an international print biennial, and I had been in two of them. And uh, then after that, they invited me to come here. Yeah. So I said, yes, I'd love to. I felt I had never been to China before, and I felt uh, that this was the opportunity to do it. And how long have you, are you living here in, on the premises now as well? I'm living here in that old village over there with the 300-year-old houses. How, how is that? How is that? It's fine. It's nice. Yeah. It's comfortable. Um, it took some getting used to, with the food especially. But um, you get used to it. You get used to it. It's all right, right? Yes, it certainly is. Uh, whereabouts are you from? I'm from uh, Pennsylvania, United States. And uh, what is it exactly that you're you're specialising in and doing here? Can I you do etching. So um, can you show us if that right here is um, one that I'm working on. Ah, okay. This is a first proof of it, and I work in stages, as most people do with etchings. And uh, I've just drawn this on the copper plate. From from the sort of beginnings, how does it? How what, you know? What's your work method? I carve the image in um, both with uh, a very sharp diamond needle. Okay. And diamond needle. Right? Yes. Okay. And then um, I also etch lines in with acid. So some of these deeper lines have been etched into the plate. Oh. Um, so it's diamond and then a a a acid to get it even deeper. Right. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Very interesting. Very interesting. From start to finish, how long would the process take? On a print like this, several yeah. months, probably four or five months. Are you learning anything here? I mean, are you picking up anything new from, from being in a sort of different environment, uh, yes. in a different country? Yes, I'm getting to talk to a lot of people. I watch the people in the shop here, how they work. Something very simple, cleaning a plate. Um, Leo cleans a plate differently than I do. He right. uses soy sauce. Really? And cleaner. Okay. I've never seen that done. And it before. works, I assume, just as well as anything. Better. Better. I was surprised. You know, sometimes you see things that you don't expect. These are absolutely lovely. Thank you very Mark, much for your time. Lovely. Cheers. Thank you. Whilst it's most popular during the weekends, if you really want to get up close to chat with the artists and far away with your questions, head up during the week. So, like any self-respecting tourist attraction, we've got ourselves a little gift shop, a rather quaint little gift shop, where we can buy such things as postcards, with some of the pictures you might have seen earlier, to send off to your parents or special little someone or something like that. It's also got lots of bits and bobs to buy. Now, this, this I've been told is slightly more interesting. This is a t-shirt that you can choose the painting and make yourself. We've also got a lot of paintings all around, as you can see. Now, adjoining, we've got a nice little coffee shop. Oh, we've even got a painting on here. Now, here, yeah, come in with me, I'll help you in. A lot of these houses were built over 200 years ago. They refurbished hacker houses, and this one is now a coffee shop. My coffee's arrived, so I'm just going to relax for a bit. Cheers. It's sometimes hard to believe that you can find a tranquil, secluded hacker village so close to such a vibrant city as Shenzhen. Even more surprising is the fact that the world's largest golf club is right next door, just a stone's throw away from Guangnam. Mm. So Shenzhen is a city filled with golf courses and we've come to the number one golf resort here in the city, but also certified by the Guinness Book of Records, the number one golf resort in the whole world. And I'll explain to you why. There are 12 legends who've designed their own courses. This guy, right here, Jack Nicklaus, was the first to design in 1994. If we keep walking along, come with me, come with me. A British legend, Nick Faldo. So hopefully we'll get to show you around some of these legendary courses. I'm gonna go inside and get ready. So just as a piece of information, if you are thinking of coming here on your own to have a round of golf, unfortunately you won't be able to unless you are a member or you have a member help you in. But if you book yourself into one of the hotels here, then the rules are slightly different and you will be able to play on your own. Hi, How are you doing? Yeah, you yeah, right? yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you very much. Very kind of you. 
So at Mission Hills, whether you're a visitor or just a member, you'll be assigned your individual caddy and your very own electric car, which you won't find in all of the golf courses in the world, especially having your own caddy. I think we're ready to go. The Jack Nicholas horse. From the first course built 25 years ago, China now has at least 500. The vast majority emerged in the past few years, according to the government. So to say that the sport is on the up could be the understatement of the year. Here at Mission Hills, you'll find more than 7,000 employees making sure that you get the golfing experience of a lifetime. As the world's largest golf facility, you can take your pick of 12 championship courses in a 20 square kilometer complex, which is also home to five-star hotels and spas. Described as one of the best country clubs in Asia, leave the wife to her massage whilst you get a nice early round in. So we've headed out to the famous Jack Nicklaus course, which was used for the 1995 World Cup, Golf World Cup. It opens as early as 5.30am, so if you're an early bird and you want to tee off early, they'll let you do that and you can go right through until 2am because certain courses have floodlights so you can play at night. Now for the moment you've all been waiting for, I make an absolute fool out of myself, ball and tee. <laughs> Take one, Mulligan, let's go again. <laughs> let's see if it goes further than five meters that last time. Okay, come on. Let's try and hit it. And that was a topper. Dollar <laughs> Wumi. Definitely over five meters, that was an absolute topper. I think I could see the ball down by the ladies' tee about five yards away, so that was, that was great. Having had your fun at Mission Hills, and seeing as you're in a shopper's paradise, it's probably time to get your wallet out. However, today, we're showing you a slightly more niche area of shopping called the Guanlan Porcelain Valley, which also happens to be right next door to Mission Hills. How convenient. Apologies if I come over a tiny bit nervous. That's because I am, because I, I get my hands all over the place. I feel like a bull quite literally in a china shop. But when you come here, don't you worry. Just make sure you check out the porcelain that they have on display. They use very, very pure colors. So red here. Now this set, for instance, would retail at 8,800 kwai, so around sort of 800 pounds at the current exchange rate, and you would get 60 items, all the ones that you can see, so don't forget to get those on your wedding list. Now with no prior knowledge of porcelain and ceramics whatsoever, I was lucky to have an assistant guide me through the different processes and the reason why a lot of the pieces here are so unique and so expensive. I was told that the colour is what gives it the price tag. It's almost like a museum and a shop rolled into one here. Still, I probably prefer to window shop at the one million RMB ceramic piece rather than run it through the till. With its subtropical climate, temperatures in Shenzhen average around 23 degrees Celsius which to me spells out perfect beach heat. Shenzhen is proud of its beaches and one of the most popular summer resorts here is Dame Sha. Promising golden sand beaches and clear seawater, it's free to the public and attracts more than 10,000 swimmers on weekends and public holidays. It's the best equipped beach resort in Shenzhen in terms of facilities. It also happens to host the International Sand Sculpture Festival. But if that's not enough, 
you can come here for all sorts of water sports and even bungee jumping. So we made our way over to Da Mei Shan, the number one beach in Shenzhen. It's completely free and during the weekend it's really really packed so probably come down here during the weekdays. It's got the best facilities of all the places in Shenzhen so come down here! So if you're looking for a good view over Da Mei Shan, head up here to their watchtower which is situated 50 meters up in the air and it has been marketed as a wish tower, which I've got to admit I'm slightly skeptical about, but if you're willing to part with 20 RMB for a fantastic view and some good opportunities to take photographs, come here. done the 62 meter high wish tower at Dame Shan. It's time to head to the highest building in Shenzhen. You think you had good views before, but minus the bikinis, this one is even better. So I've headed up to the Meridian View Center, which is all the way on the 69th floor, 384 meters in the air, and it gives you a 360 degree view all over the city and Hong Kong as well. And on top of that, you get to learn about Shenzhen and Hong Kong history. Now I am going to grab a beautiful view. So a few things to see besides the view, and it closes at 10. <laughs> History in the making. Maggie Thatcher having a chat with Deng Xiaoping. Take a picture. A robot guide introducing the two cities. A gift and souvenir shop with some general knickknacks. Food and drink. A 3D pirate story starring my favourite man, Jung Z Y. So Shenzhen grew as a city, so did its immigrant population, and with it they brought all sorts of regional Chinese dishes. That's one of the enjoyable things you can do in the city, is try out any type of regional dishes. We've come to a Hubei speciality restaurant, and they're famous for steamed food. So healthy, and we've had a hard day today, so bon appétit! Mm. Well, as the day draws to night, it's the perfect time to savour Shenzhen's dining and nightlife options. So, if you're looking for something to do in the evenings at your time in Shenzhen, you want a nice little stroll on the promenade, and there's a place with plenty of restaurants, bars with live music. It's called Shuko. Come on down here, it's lovely, it's relaxing, and there's a nice sea breeze as well. Thanks to the mild weather, you can enjoy al fresco dining and drinking at many of the venues here, which is a definite plus point in my books. The majority of the bars and night spots can be found either here in Shukou or in Hua Chiao City, which is particularly popular with a young crowd. Whatever you choose, make sure you enjoy a good beer in the evening, especially if, like me, you've nailed a good round of golf. So we've headed into the western part of the city, right down by the sea, to an area where a lot of foreigners like to congregate. And we've come to one of the symbols of this area, which is this permanently moored cruise liner, where they have got a sports bar on the bottom, hotel rooms in the middle, and then this lovely veranda on the top with live music, and you can get some western food and beers as well. Hope you think I've earned this. Cheers. So that's it for Shenzhen. I'm Mark Edwards, and I'll catch you very soon on another episode of Travelogue.